Alexander. I'm a PhD student in environmental engineering at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And I'm working on an environmental assessment of the Feed the Future Soybean Innovation Lab technical experiments on our smart farms. With respect to soybean and the environment and with regard to agriculture generally, um, a lot of environmental assessment is concerned with the movement of substances through water and soil. Um, those substances can be nutrients, so especially nitrogen and phosphorus, um, and also any additives to the fields, including pesticides. We'd like to make sure we're aware of where those are going once we release them into the field. Some things, such as nitrogen, can be released into the atmosphere. Um, eutrophication is a big issue in terms of nutrient transport downstream into any receiving water bodies. You can have an effect on the water quality. Uh, the, the release of any substances into drinking water would be an issue, so we need to make sure we know where water is being rooted to. Um, if we begin irrigation, we need to know where water is coming from so that we're not adding water stress to the location we're in. And then the exposure of any people or animals to chemicals that, that would be unintended, we need to be aware of and be able to prevent. Uh, with regard to soy in particular, as far as environmental effects go, one of the benefits is actually that soy is able to fix its own atmospheric nitrogen through a symbiotic relationship with soil bacteria. Um, because of that, you don't have to add as much nitrogen as you would to other types of crops. Um, and so the reduction in added fertilizer is a benefit in terms of environmental management because there, there's, a, there's not an extra amount that's not being used which can run off. Um, in addition, we really need to consider the tropical environment that we're in. It's not, it's not only what's specific about soy, but also what's specific about the tropics. So again, with regard to nutrients, there is a lower phosphorus in a lot of tropical soils, and uh, that meaning that phosphorus fertilizer has to be added, so we'd like to make sure we're adding the correct amount of fertilizer, not excess fertilizer. And also the soil regime, whether it's very sandy or very compact, will have to do with how much water and therefore other substances actually drain through the soil and will have an impact on environmental effects. One of the main things we'll be doing is uh, soil quality measurements. So we've already started with soil quality measurements. That's something we want to continue to monitor along the course of the project. And we'll also be looking at water quality measurements. Uh, finally, air quality measurements or, or the amount of gaseous emissions of different types is something we're interested in that we might have to model. Um, with some input information, we, we might not be able to measure that directly. In addition to those three, we're still looking at other things that we might want to measure. As far as intervention goes, understanding your farm, your soil, your system is really going to help farmers apply the right amounts of nutrients or any necessary pesticides or herbicides so that we don't have over application or application of something that's not quite relevant. Um, continual monitoring of your farm and, and soil stewardship so that your soil remains healthy and can be farmed for a long period of time and you don't farm the soil to death is very important. Um, soil stewardship is good for the farmer, good for productivity, and good for the environment. From the uh, Tropical Soybean for Development workshop, one of the main takeaways for me was capacity building. Um, so something we're focusing on is working with farmers so that they have the resources and the training to really understand and improve their systems. And that includes environmental management and, as I mentioned, uh, improving soil quality, maintaining soil quality, and only applying the correct amounts of fertilizer and uh, any other additive substances and then also the potential for mechanization. A lot of farmers and the governments in the countries we're working in would like to see enhanced mechanization instead of manually operated farms, which is what exists for most small shareholder farms now. Um, but with mechanization and irrigation, in particular, will come different environmental impacts. So that's something we need to continue to monitor and understand. If anyone's interested in learning more about agriculture and the environment, then they can contact me through the Soybean Innovation Lab website.